Hey guys, if you don't know me, I'm Anthony Francisco and I'm a senior visual development artist here at Marvel Studios and um, I get to help with designing the heroes and villains of the MCU. So today's presentation is about how I designed Loki for Thor Ragnarok. Uh, luckily, Taika YTD wanted uh, a brand new look for Loki. So he wanted Loki to feel really like, you know, macho and really um really like a like a viking you know i guess that that's how uh when you say traditional look for norse mythology uh that's what i thought um it was gonna look like um uh, not trying to really steer clear from how he used to look like before here's some of the images i started I did this like i think it's a day or a couple of days just trying to feel him out you know trying to different type of helmets because the other helmet was really metal and huge and very elegant very regal and he uh, I was trying to play him more like a like a warrior prince so Taika wanted a brand new character uh, brand new look for Loki so but then Loki when I was designing it the first time it didn't look quite like uh, Loki from before and we wanted him to still resemble Loki from the first movies but totally different costume still and him feeling like he's trying to fit in in Sakaar and this is where I started uh, experimenting with straps. Still keeping the green. And de developing him some more with different uh, unique armors that could fit more in Sakaar. How long did each iteration take? I think, I don't remember how long we were working on this, but I tend to do a lot, generate a lot of ideas the first day, but everything is kind of rough. So I would say like five of the ones I showed you, the first versions that was like, um, um, more like Viking-like, that was all done in a day. This is where I felt like I had a breakthrough because I was trying to find like a, a unique look for his armor and I was just thinking, oh, like padded, softer, um, softer leather armor uh, because he doesn't want to get hurt. And he's a magic user, right? Usually they're not as armored. They're usually behind like a warrior. So, and then this is where I started getting the diagonal lines because I was really trying to figure out in the script what he's about. And, you know, he, he lost his mom and he lost his dad and his sister's trying to kill them. Um, and all of that makes it feel like he's off balance, you know, um, just with mourning inside, like he's he's really in pain. So I'm going to just zoom in a little bit. So, yeah, so I was trying to try to trying some colors here for him. When I was doing this, the asymmetry still building that up, uh, trying to figure out new types of armor because but still have remnants from uh, Asgard, right? But but changing the shape. But okay, and um, this is the like the original. Uh, how do you say this? The feeling like Loki of old. But now I gotta bring him to Sakar, right? If he's in Sakar, should he? Should he uh, uh, rise up in in the ranks and then be with um, the uh, the grandmaster? He has to look the part. So um, they had asked me to do more versions that that feel more colorful. And I'm now trying to get more colorful because he has to go into Sakar, and um, he, he he had to feel like um like Liberace kind of feeling, like he's very uh very um like peacock you know i want everyone to notice me this is a good exercise to like push me to to just put that color down so i just be very bold with it and and this is the liberace version i was talking about <laughs> so getting even close to the patterns inside i would try to really understand maybe there's some stitching there you know going on I would make these little brush patterns even though you can't see it it sometimes I just do it just to maybe um, help with 
uh, inspiring more thought i guess you have to design based on what it does you know in, in the film like the Dora Milaje I know they had to move really crazily so I really patterned their costume to you know like a samurai costume like how that's built it's so like um, designed in a way that you could move because they're, they're, they're one of the most iconic you know warriors so I kind of adapted that and tried to put it and make the Wakanda uh, warrior you know the Dora Milaje be like a samurai yeah hopefully this is informative for you guys <laughs> so this is even louder like a louder design idea how would it look like um uh so more um that liberace feeling right more blues they want him blue so i was trying more blue ideas uh, mixed with um uh yeah yellows and teal uh and then I got the note that, you know, no, we want him just all blue. Um, what's nice with giving a variety of these, so so from those color stuff to here, these were all like given in one meeting. Um, and, and I went really green, like versions of green, but all green and maybe just like yellow here. And then purples. And, and this yellow, my banana suit, this is one of my favorite ones because my symbolism for this is this was really turned inside out you know because of everything that's happened to him so I, I try to always put story into my design as much as possible because you know the, the torment he's feeling inside and you know his sadness he doesn't know which side he's going to be if he's going to remain good or bad uh, hence the you know the the lines uh, the horizontal lines so pretty much everything else turned into Sakar look for his new costume but I kept some of Charlie's in the design sense from his old costume um, okay I, I did the blue and it worked really well uh, purple inside this is where everything kind of came together story wise same thing the uh, the diagonal lines cut lines making him feel like he's uh, not uh, balanced the purple inside uh, symbolizing his uh, mourning um, and, and the dark inside just him being you know sad but but you have a little sliver of hope right here that's kind of like the story right um and even the little danes from reaching back to his past in asgard and he still holds that this heart you know it's like this heart his from his mom because he loves his mom so much you know so it's almost like he keeps that with him uh wherever he goes he never lost it even though that big crest was this big if you look at his old designs it's this big and then it was relegated to this small because he was, you know, in going through his story, his ordeal, but he never lost uh, his love of his mom. Um, yeah, that's how I do my stories sometimes. It gets, it gets, uh, I don't t say that much to people, but, um, but yeah, that just for you guys, you know, to know how design ideas work and I like doing stories within my design. You know, so that was the final design, the final look approved. Um, and then we went on with the helmets. Um, and, you know, Adam Ross uh, helped me, uh, like, bring this design to fruition in 3D. So um, so I did turnarounds for this. Uh, here, uh, let me see. I even I even did a turnaround of the helmet because they were having trouble with the helmet. I Because I do also do ZBrush, so I would adjust the helmet myself too. Um, and and the ears coming out that was before when they first made the helmet the ears were being covered up and it there was something that was was interesting about it but with the ears showing it just felt lighter and it felt more like that's Loki and then I would make uh, these helmet notes for um, Yeah, see the sharpness of this? I wanted that sharpness, and initially they didn't have that uh, sharpness. And the helmet is my favorite part because that's like straight from the comic book. Uh, just, just more. Um, um, what's this? Um, I use Jack Kirby's shapes more and try to modernize Jack Kirby's shapes. And if you notice, I use the same kind of themes on my um on um 
Hulk's armor. So I I I, I found a shape uh, that I like. So let's say I have uh, Jack Kirby's work up, right? And I'm looking at the shapes, but I'm trying to find my shape, but feel like Jack Kirby. Man, it's, it's, this brings me back to how fun it was doing this, all the challenges involved. And, you know, um, Andy, thank you for uh, for trusting in me with this design. It's like, he just let me roll with it. It's awesome. And yeah, so that notes and then Loki helmet, more notes. And even if you notice, even the space inside with the pinching take the pinch away so uh this where is it i can't even see where it is exactly if this, there's a difference take away this pinch i don't even remember what pinch is that oh, oh there it is this i see it so i would be really aware of this see this kind of gradation that means the model is turning a certain way um, luckily, you know, that's why you need to learn ZBrush too. So you know how things turn and how things sit in space better. So that's something's happening there. So I said, no, I want that like straight, right? Uh, is it possible? You know, and this is where I really, you know, learned to be clear with what I want to say. Uh, like the, the size of this helmet get wider from original image. And, you know, Andy was really helping me with this. And it's almost like I was being trained to lead in a way. Um, we would like to keep the silhouette of the ears showing if possible. That's that's Andy saying that to me, like, hey, this is how you should say stuff, right? Um, and making sure it's clear, a line showing it there and that. Um, and then raising this. And I was trying to explain here, like, this is four points. You know, not five points, because I think they had five points. And it was doing this kind of buckling that, that, that I didn't like. So if possible, can you make this go kind of taper this way and then because I, I really like the rhythm going into the face and maintain all these rhythms so again showing showing the rhythm going in here and into the eyes and down here so all this kind of follows that so here's another example of trying to tell explain where things curve you know because because with this one it's not it's flat it goes like this but I want it to go uh, like like more like that right like that's the that's the cutout I, I wanted so it I could say it, it really is a big um, going into these little details now so here ears are not showing if possible to show the ears more like this because it it has an elegance to it um, that pushes him and to me you know Loki's is very elegant and his elegance will will mesmerize you and then side view more side view stuff even the under view I wanted to see just to make sure that we are getting the right separation here and how it sits on the brow and how far it goes here so this is an actual um, Tom Hiddleston scan um, and then explaining how the shape sits on top and what is the shape where the corners are because in, in the beginning it was more like curvy and, and doesn't have the angles and uh, the layering I had to make sure the layering was there it's not just one piece you know uh, Thor um, Loki's a complicated character he has a lot of layers you know <laughs> front and back and the back uh, sometimes it's not uh, fully finished because we have to do this really fast you know uh, once it's approved then we go to another project we have two three things working at the same time so we have to like make these stuff faster but it's clear enough that you know when when they build it they'll at least have an idea where things could be and then he here is more um, with the cape this time Yeah, there's a we, we do think of like the front and back views um, overall, even when we're doing the front piece design, because that's really what, you know, more experienced designers do. Right. Everyone at Marvel thinks that way. 
Anyway, here is a version of like the back views of the cape, more cape versions. But this time, this is uh, the um, the bug version, scarab scarab version. Um, and, and yeah, it, it was it was so fun to do this. All right, guys, thank you again so much for for joining me, and uh, we'll see you again later. Um, okay, thank you again. Uh, bye. I'm gonna disconnect now. Uh...